the other day I made a response video to uh, Fire in the Dawn. In that video, I um, said that I might would tell you guys my story about false allegations. Well, this is that video. Before I get started, I'd like to thank all my new subscribers and let everyone know that I have a new Facebook page under my real name, Jack Barnes. Go over and check it out, drop me a line. And for those of you that have been trying to contact me through my old Facebook page, I haven't been able to access it because I tried to log in from another computer and Facebook thought somebody was trying to hack my account and locked me out of it and I couldn't get back in. So I just started a new page. Let's go over and check it out. I'm not there very often, but I try to drop by there once a week or once every couple of weeks. First off, let's start by looking at uh, Fire in the Dawn's article. Here's the screenshots. Let me start off by saying that my experience with false allegations really doesn't compare to what guys go through who are uh, falsely accused of rape or domestic violence. Mine was in high school. It was a, a false allegation of sexual harassment and I got three days in school suspension and it's not on my record that I know of. Um, I guess I'll just start by telling you the story. A friend of mine was dating a girl, and she decided she didn't want to date him anymore. She wanted to date me. Well, he was okay with that, and I thought, sure, okay, why not? And uh, so we started dating. We dated for a while, and uh, she was immature, she was possessive, she was everything that we talk about when we talk about the little entitled princess. She wanted everything done her way, the way she wanted it, and if you couldn't do it, then there was something wrong with you. You wasn't treating her right, you wasn't doing her right. I put up with that about as long as I could. And uh, we broke up. And then we got back together. <clears throat> when we got back together, she decided it would be fun to sleep with one of my other friends. She did. She told my friend that, oh, me and him aren't together. Then, you know, me and this guy wasn't really all that close. We saw each other once in a while. We used to have been close before when I was in like elementary school, but I went to a different high school than he did. So we weren't that close anymore, but we hung out on occasions. She, he thought that me and this girl had broken up and went our separate ways. He didn't know that we were still together. So she lied to him. He believed her, and it pissed me off. I called her a damn whore. Actually, just a whore, but anyway... Um, It was in school when I said this. I went up to the principal's office, and, or the vice principal called me up to his office, and um, he told me, he said, look, you know, you can't be doing this. This is against the school sexual harassment policy. You can't say that, blah, 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 blah. I said, okay, fine, won't happen again. He let me go. Well, I can't remember how long it was after that. It may have been a week, it may have been a month, I can't remember. Me and the friend, the first one, the one that was dating her before me, we were walking in school one day, walking in the back doors from the parking lot. I looked down the hallway, probably about, I don't know, 100, 150 feet, and there she was, standing there, uh, her new boyfriend, and she was chewing his ass out. I'm talking about, she was one of these women that could just flip the, 
you know, flip a switch and the tears would start pouring anytime she got ready, yeah, she she would have made a good actress. Um, she was chewing him out. He was backed up against the lockers, his head hanging down, you know, looking at the floor. She was, I think, a sophomore, and he might have been a freshman. He didn't know what was going on. He didn't have a clue. I stopped my friend. I grabbed him by the shoulder, and I stopped him, and, and uh, I said, watch this. And she did everything that she used to do to me and used to do to him to this poor boy. <clears throat> I was, or we were both seniors at that time. Well, when she walked away, you know, she never saw us. We were standing to the side of her a long ways off, and she never really paid any attention that we were there. Well, she walked away and stomped off around the corner, off around the corner, and um, we uh, we walked up to this guy. I didn't know him. I'd probably seen him around, but I didn't really know him at all. And I told him, I said, dude, she's not worth it. I said, she's done the same thing to me. She's done the same thing to him. And I, I think I might have told him that she cheated on me, you know, uh, around behind my back and stuff. And, I said, she's not worth it. And um, so that was the end of the conversation, pretty much. We turned around and walked off. But what I didn't know, and I saw this kid out of the corner of my eye. Uh, well, let me start that again. Um, the doors to our classrooms were recessed into the wall of the hallway about four feet. You could stand in, in front of a door, and no one would see you in there. Well, this kid was kind of standing in there with his head kind of peek, peeking around the corner or standing up against one of the side walls looking around the corner at us. And I noticed him, but I didn't know who he was. Well, we, me and my friend walked away. Later on that afternoon, the principal called me up to his office. I'm going, what, what's the deal with this? I actually kind of got a little bit worried. I thought something might happen to one of my, you know, some of my family or something. Well, he called me up there. He said, she said you called her a whore again. I said, well, I didn't do it. He said, you're getting three days in school suspension. And that's just about how the conversation went. He was just, he had decided before I even stepped foot in that office that I'd, I'd done it, I was guilty, and I was getting three days in school suspension, which in school suspension, you go to another building and it's all off by itself and you sit in a little cubicle all day long. They bring you your lunch. You can only get up and go to the bathroom like twice. And you sit there and you do your schoolwork all day long with well, nobody to talk to, no interaction with anybody else. Uh, they let you get up and walk around the gymnasium, I uh, think, about once or no, once or twice. Anyway, that's what in-school suspension is. It's not really that big a deal. For somebody like myself who likes being by myself, I didn't really care. I didn't get to, uh, I got a uh, three days of not having to listen to my teachers. Woohoo! Anyway. But uh, he told me, he said, you got three days in school suspension. And this ended up in a shouting contest. I didn't get completely out of line. I didn't call him any names like what I wanted to, spineless bastard. But anyway, I, I got up and I stood up and shouted a little bit. And he shouted a little bit. And, I, you know, I, I was pissed. This was wrong. I didn't do anything. I was pissed off. I called my mom. My mom called my dad. And, you know, they just told me, should you just go ahead and get your books and go on home and be ready to report to end school uh, next morning. I said, okay. So I was on my way home. By the time I got home, my dad and my mom were on the phone with a lawyer in a three-way, you know, conversation. Uh, my dad was over-the-road truck driver, owner-operator owner -operator like me. <clears throat> and uh, he drove 900 miles between like, I guess somewhere between three and six o'clock that evening. And he was sitting in the principal's office when the school, when the doors opened the next morning, he was standing there waiting to get into the principal's office, him, him and my mom. They handed him the copy of the school sexual harassment policy. He threw it at them, threw it back at them across the desk. And our lawyer said, that won't fly. And of course that, they, they kind of, like oh he's done talked to a lawyer you know and he said look where is the person of authority that heard my son say this and they said there's nobody he said so it's her word against his 
They said, yeah. He said, all right, tell you what we'll do. We'll let him have to stay in the school suspension for the three days, but this is coming off his record. It's not going to show up on his record. And they said, well, he admitted to it once. And that's when my dad got up out of the chair. My mom had to grab him by the arm pull him back down in the chair. Mom and dad both told me the same story, and they, they don't lie. They've never lied to me about something like this anyway. And, uh, of course, that kind of scared the principal and the vice principal a little bit. He said, uh, he told me, he said, your problem is still going to be here. That girl is still going to be here. He's graduating in six months, or it was three months, six months, something anyway. I can't remember. Le I think it was less than six months. He said, but she's still going to be here. Your problem is still going to be here. So that's coming off his record. And they said, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll keep it off his record. And that was pretty much the end of it. Well, my dad told me, he says, look, just do your time and do those three days and then you're out of there. You ain't going to never see those people again. They can't control you anymore. They can't do anything to you anymore. So, you know, just let it, just ride it out, let it go. And he said, don't talk to this girl. Don't look at this girl. Don't have anything to do with it. Just stay away from her. He said, you only got like six months or whatever and you're out of there. I said, okay. And, uh, now, my buddy that was with me when we was talking to her little boyfriend, he got three days, too. But his parents just rolled over. They went in there with their hat in their hand. And they, they, uh, the principal laid down the law, and they were, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. You know, and so his parents just rolled over. Mine didn't. I don't know if it's still on his record or not. But anyway, I got out of the, end, the three days in school. And I guess this went on for about a month. Anytime her and her friends would see me in the hall, they would antagonize me, try to get me to say something, try to get me to do something, stick their tongues out at me, flip me off, you know, just anything they could do to get me to say something, and I wouldn't. They'd point their finger, gather around me, point their fingers and laugh at me and stuff like that. And, um... I had to put up with it, and I knew it did. I didn't have a choice. And that was the worst part of it, I think. Knowing, knowing that I, I had to take it, and there was nothing I could do about it. I couldn't even say anything back to them. Nothing. I couldn't say a word. I just had to stand there and look at the floor, or stand there and pretend like I was getting something out of my locker, or doing something, you know, rearrange my books in my locker, or something. I had to pretend to do something. Just stand there hanging my head. The feeling of someone having that much power over you that they can just destroy you at any moment in time is probably one of the worst feelings in the world. I hope none of you ever have to feel that. And the feeling of knowing that she can do whatever she wants and she can get away with it and she can at any time just all she had all she would have had done was say I did it again and I probably wouldn't have graduated I'd have probably had to went and got my GED because they'd have thrown me out of school and said, you're not coming back. That, that feeling of just praying and begging every day, please don't let this be the day that she gets a wild hair up her ass and decides to do it again. Another person having that much power over you, to me, it's almost intolerable. Today, it would be intolerable because I'm an adult. Now I can do something about it. The shame, the humiliation of people, other people walking by and seeing them do this and seeing me not just, just stand there and take it. I learned a very, very valuable lesson about what women are capable of. 
I already pretty much knew, but I had it proven to me. Uh, previous experiences had proven to me that women are just as just as sorry, just as low down, just as heartless, just as cruel and cold and unfeeling as any man can be. That there's women out there like that. <coughs> so, I already knew it, but it just had it reinforced. What she did, any human being could do to any other human being. The problem was the system. That's what got me, was the system. The system is supposed to be there to protect uh, me or anyone else from that happening to them. But the system is on her side. Because she's a woman, or a girl at that time, but uh, because she's female. Trust me, that thought has never left my mind. The year after, or the next year after that, the principal quit. He went to another school. Or no, I'll take it back, he went into the private sector. Somewhere along that time, the vice principal retired. She didn't graduate. The last I heard, I don't know, I had never seen her again. Or, well, I'll take it back, I saw her one time. Oh, uh, was in the mall. It was around Valentine's Day, and she was working a kiosk, and, you know, in between in between the stores and in the, the hallway in the mall. She saw me and she went to crying. And I had my wife with me, but we weren't married that time. We just started dating. We'd probably been dating about two months. And I told my wife, I said, you remember that girl I was telling you about? I mean, what she did? She said, yeah. I said, there she is over there. No, I'll take that back. We'd been dating like a year and two months. I apologize, I got mixed up on the dates there. Because I started dating my wife the last year of high school. Not long after this happened with this girl. Anyway, that's another story, sorry. Um, and I had to grab my wife and take it, come on, come on, leave her alone now. Don't go over and whoop her ass. I don't need that, come on. You know, because she, I, she really cared about me at that point in time. She's ready to whoop the girl's ass, you know. Anyway, so Fire in the Dawn wrote that story that I just need to get over it. Once you have something like that happen to you, you don't ever get over it completely. But yeah, it doesn't affect my life today. It doesn't really, well, it does, but it doesn't. It changed me forever. Something like that will change you forever. You don't ever get over it. But what he was meaning by that, and he's just a two-bit, another little spineless mangina bastard. It's all he is. But, and, well, really, in what he the story he wrote, it doesn't mean anything to me. Like I said, he ain't worth nothing. He, you know, the video he made about me was up for three weeks and it had 21 views. And he's got about the same amount of subscribers that I do. But anyway, the video or the, the excuse me, the article he wrote about it was, uh, it was normal feminist bullshit telling men Suck it up, ignore your pain, ignore what's going on around you, ignore the fact that you're a second-class citizen that doesn't have equal rights. Ignore all that and just keep doing what we tell you to do. Keep doing what you're supposed to do. Well, to anybody that says that, I got two things to say. Fuck that and fuck you. I'm not doing it. I'm going to fight this and I'm going to do my best to make it right. Because what happened to me has now been enshrined into law by the Department of Justice. And um, what was it? The Title IX coordinators or whatever, they wrote this into law. It's now policy at schools for this to happen. Feminists did that. Yeah, feminists. And if you're watching feminists, that means you did it. I hold you responsible. You support the movement. You back it up. You talk or you shout the rhetoric. You 
you uh, say you're a feminist, you say feminism is about equality when we all know it's not, we all know that's bullshit. I hold you partly responsible for that being made into the rules and regulations for colleges, universities, and if I'm not mistaken, the dear colleague letter says any school that receives federal funding, which is also high schools, it comes through the state. So that's pretty much my experience with false allegations. Like I said, any it wasn't necessarily her. It wasn't necessarily the fact it was a female. It was the fact that it was she got away with it because she was female. And the reason for that is is because the system is set up for that to happen. She has a pussy, she gets a pass. That's the way it works. That needs to change. Feminists don't want it to change. Feminists like the fact that women have this power and ability. Well, it needs to change. And we, me and the men's rights movement, are working to change it. And we don't give a damn whether you feminists like it or not.